Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Daily Devotion uh, on Tuesday morning. Uh, good to have you with us this morning. This morning, I've got my beautiful wife, Bosanita, with me. Good morning, everybody. For some supporting this morning. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Good morning, I'm Pastor Will, and it's my privilege to be with you again this morning for this daily devotion. We are on day 17th, and today we're going to speak about Created to Grow. Now, Billy Graham says this, he says, Being a Christian is more than just an instantaneous conversion. It's not just this once-off thing. It says it's more like a daily process whereby you grow to be more like Christ. Amen? That's the goal. For us to grow, to be more like Christ every day. Just think of a baby being born. You know, there's such a great expectation for that child to come. Nine months you prepare for it. You wait for it. And when that baby is born, you want it to grow. You want it to be healthy. You know, anything that is healthy will grow. If something is not healthy, it will not grow. For instance, if a baby is not healthy it will cease to grow and will die so when something is not healthy we take it to the doctor we take the baby to the doctor it says doctor what's wrong the doctor says well the baby doesn't want to eat so he will not grow there's something wrong so they help the child the same way for us as children of god amen when we do not grow we die if something is healthy it will grow if you're not healthy you need to eat. Amen. You need to get into the diet, which is the word of God. Um, Billy Graham also says the goal of a child's life is maturity. And the goal of a Christian's life is spiritual maturity. So, yes, the goal. When I had my two boys, I had them as a baby. But the goal is not just to have a baby. It is to help them grow, to be mature adults, mature people. that can make decisions for themselves. The same with Christians. We are to grow in, in, in maturity, in spiritual maturity. You can see that in Hebrews 6, um, verse 1. It says, he also says, Don't let anything or anyone stand in your way of your growth in Christ. Never forget, God's will is for us to become more like Christ. Amen. We are to become more like Christ. How do we become more like Christ? There's a key. As a baby grows, how does a baby grow? By feeding every two to three hours. The same way we grow when we feed ourselves with the Word of God regularly. Not just once off, once a year. <laughs> we need to feed regularly of the Word of God. And when we, we study the Word of God and when we get into it, certain things will happen in our life, you know. Um, first of all, the Word will transform our lives. And we see in, in Psalms 119 verse 9, let me read that for you. It says, um, the first thing that will happen if you read the Word of God, it says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to the Word of God. So when you start feeding yourself with the Word of God and taking heed of the Word of God, it will cleanse your way. Maybe you're struggling on your way. And you can't figure out how to clean it. How to set your life right. How to set the path right. Maybe, maybe you are struggling. Maybe you are misfit. You're in starvation mode. Well, you need to feed on the word of God. And once you start doing it, it will cleanse your way. The second point we see is it will sanctify you it will set you apart that's john 17 verse 17 let us read that together john 17 17 they are not of the world just as i am not of this world sanctify them by your truth your word is truth so sanctify them by your truth we are sanctified by the word of god our sanctification means to be set apart now set apart for two things First for holiness towards God and then set apart for service. That is your purpose. It is to take up your purpose in God. So once you start getting in the word of God in your life, the seed of God, then 
you will start seeing your purpose as well. And you will know that you are set apart by God for it. You have a purpose. He's got a plan for your life. Amen. The third thing we see is that you will be built up. The word will build you. Let's read in, in Deuteronomy uh, 12 verse 28. It says, Observe and obey all the words which I command you. That it may go well with you and your children after you forever. When you do what is good and right in the sight of the Lord. There's a key here. It says observe and obey the word of God. It is not only by observing. James teaches us that if you say that you are a hearer of the word but not a doer, you, you deceive yourself. You're only a hearer of the word by doing the word. The word of God is like a mirror. And when we look into this mirror, we are to see the image and the likeness of Christ. Amen. Now, why do you go look in a mirror? Now, a normal person, not somebody that's obsessed by themselves, but a normal healthy person. Go and we look into the mirror, like myself, to see, am I presentable? Is my hair combed? Is my face clean? Is my teeth brushed? And if it's not, I do something about it. I apply water to my face. I wash my face. I comb my hair. You see, that's to also apply what you see. You know, when we look into the Word of God and we don't see the image and likeness, we need to allow the Word to wash us clean. Amen? To bring correction where there needs to be correction. So we are in the image and likeness of God. Remember, God's goal for our lives is to be like Christ. Amen. Then we see point four. You will have power to overcome the devil. And that's in 1 John 2 verse 13 says the book, but it's actually verse 14. Um, so you can go to 1 John 2 um, verse 14. Let me quickly go there and read this for you. It says, I have written to you, fathers. Because you have known him who is from the beginning. And I have written to you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you. And you have overcame the wicked one. Amen. So what is happening here? Because the word of God abides in you, abides in you, you have overcome. You have the power to overcome. So when you get the word of God in your life, you will receive the power to overcome the enemy. Amen. Reading the Bible is the book is like finding a storeroom full of seed. This is a storeroom, a warehouse full of seed. But we know that seed in a storehouse means nothing. That seed, for it to bear fruit, needs to be taken and to be planted. You need to Allow the Holy Spirit to take that seed and plant it into your life, into your heart, to bear fruit into your life. And you will see, once you allow the enemy, uh, you will see, once you allow the Holy Spirit to do this in your life, you will start reading the Word differently. Things will start popping out. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to you. He will, he will take the Word and He will take knowledge and He will turn it into revelation in your life you will you maybe you will not uh, understand something and the Holy Spirit will just come and open it up for you maybe you never experienced healing for somebody praying for you but the moment you start reading the word and you see God's promises you get healed because you, you receive the revelation it's not about somebody praying for you it's about you getting the truth the word of God in you it's about right believing maybe you were struggling financially and you maybe you were thinking that you know, that is for to be rich or to be wealthy is for somebody else. Still, until you start reading the word of God and he reveals his heart to you. And it changes the way we think. It transforms our thinking into the image and the likeness of God. Amen. So, Second Peter 1 verse 4 states this. It says, Peter said that God gave us his very great and precious promises this is it this is god's very great and per, um, precious promises so that through them you and i may participate in the divine nature it's not just a fleshly thing 
It is the divine nature. We are to participate in the divine nature of him. Having escaped corruption in this world caused by our evil desires. Amen. This is so powerful. The word of God. I just want to read this to you. Um, it says, when a promise is made real in your life, we experience the incredible power of God and we become partakers in His divine nature. In other words, we take on a holy nature. Amen. The Word of God not only brings us closer to Him, it also distances us from the corruption of this world. Amen. So the Word of God will draw you closer to God. And it will distance you from the world. Amen. Amen. So that is our lesson for today. And I want to go with you quickly to through the, the four um, the questions, the life lesson, just as part of the session this morning. And point number one there says, when Jeremiah fed on God's word, what did it become to him? For that we need to read Jeremiah 15 verse 16. It says, your words were found and I ate them. Your words was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name. Amen. So what did this bring to Jeremiah? It brought him joy. The word of God will bring joy in your life. And his heart was rejoicing. Amen. You need joy in your life? Get into the word of God. You will not find it anywhere else. You know, it will be short-lived. Maybe a gift it will be nice. Maybe some new clothes. Maybe a new car. You'll get used to all those things. But the word of the Lord brings an everlasting joy that makes you keep rejoicing even in hard times in your life. Then, point number two. How important were God's words to Job? Now we know Job and what he went through. How important was the word of God for him? Job 23 verse 12 says, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Isn't this amazing? We know that the, the struggles that Job went through, how he was tested. But he kept the word of the Lord. It was more important to him than even eating bread. He, he, he honored the word of God so much. And we know that the outcome of that was great multiplication in his life. Everything he lost, God restored it to him, even double. Amen. That is the God who we serve. Then, number three. How can a young person lead a clean life? Well, we read that in Psalms 119 verse 19. When we said that um, a young man, how can, he cleanse his way? how can he cleanse his way? By taking heed of the word of God. Amen. By taking heed, to, to hold on to it, to, to believe it. Not to only believe in God and to believe in His Word, but to believe His Word. Many times we believe in things, but we don't believe it. We don't believe God. We believe in God, but we don't believe His Word when He says, I want to bless you, I want to prosper you. And when you go through trials, I will take you through it. I will lead you through the shadow of, shadow of the valley of death. Once we're in the shadow of the valley of death, we, we say, where's God? Where's God? He's right there leading you through it. That's starting to believe what he says. Amen. And then the last one, number four. What two results does God's word produce in young people when it lives in them? And that's 1 John 2 verse 14. And we read it earlier and let's read it again. It says, I've written to you. Fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcame the wicked one. Amen. When we get into the word of God and we allow that seed to be planted in our lives and to bear fruit, man, we are strong in God. And then we have the, we have the power to overcome the wicked one. Not by our own strength, when the word of God abides, abides in us. Amen. Amen. What a powerful word this morning. And uh, just a final note here about this lesson. Remember this lesson. The word of God transforms me so that the nature of God can be formed in me and I can become more 
like Jesus. Amen. Amen. That is the goal. That is why we get into the Word of God. Amen. To become more like Him. The world needs Jesus. The world needs to see Him. Every eye needs to see Him. How will they see Him? Through you and me. But for that, we need to get into the Word of God. Amen. I pray that this Word has blessed you this morning. May God bless you.